direct indicating magnetic compass, within its limitations of error, shows the heading of an airplane in relation to the magnetic north pole. To understand its operation, it is necessary to understand something of the magnetic characteristics of the Earth. All navigational maps, with their lines of latitude and longitude, are based on the geographical, or true, north and south pole. However, the Earth itself is a great magnet, having magnetic north and south poles which do not coincide with the true poles, and whose positions vary from year to year. When a magnetized bar or needle is freely suspended, one end will point toward the magnetic north pole. This invariable action is the basis of the magnetic compass. There are two major errors in the magnetic compass. The first is called variation, which represents the difference between true direction as expressed on maps and the magnetic direction as shown by the compass. Charts such as this are plotted to show the lines of magnetic variation in multiples of five degrees. Along the line of zero variation, your compass reading would be the true direction. Along all other lines, a compass error or variation will exist and must be corrected to obtain a true course. With easterly variation, the magnetic course would read less than true so the value of the variation must be added to the compass reading for a true course. With westerly variation, subtract the error from the compass indication. The second main error which must be taken into consideration by the pilot is magnetic deviation due to the attraction of electrical wiring or metal parts of the plane on the compass magnet. This attraction causes the compass to deflect from its north-south reading. Obviously, this deviation will change depending on the location of the disturbing element in the plane. The heading of the plane also causes a change in the deviation of the compass. Let us presume that a magnetic influence is in the nose of the plane. When the plane is flying north, the south pole of this magnetic element attracts the north-seeking pole of the compass in a northerly line, and there is no deviation. However, when the plane is flying east, the south pole of the nose magnet tends to pull the compass magnet away from its proper heading, resulting in an easterly error. When the plane is heading south, the south pole of the nose magnet will be opposite the south-seeking pole of the compass magnet. Repulsion of these light poles will tend to deflect the compass magnet. However, where the Earth's field is the stronger of the two, as in this instance, a correct reading will result. When flying west, the compass magnet is drawn away from its correct reading and shows a westerly deviation. Any deviation errors remaining, after all possible adjustments have been made on the compass, are noted on a correction card which is mounted just beside the compass. The pilot takes these corrections into consideration when flying his course. A peculiarity of the magnetic compass is its tendency to either lag behind or lead the true heading of the plane during turns. Say you are flying a course roughly northwest as shown by your compass and your directional gyro and you are in a northern latitude you begin a turn to the north. From the beginning of the turn, during it, and at the completion of it, your compass reading will lag behind the true heading as shown by the directional gyro. If still in a northern latitude, you are flying a course on a near south heading and your readings are identical, when you begin a turn to the south, your compass reading will lead that of your directional gyro throughout the turn. In southern latitudes, the effect of turning errors is exactly the opposite. When flying under turbulent conditions, the compass card will swing unpredictably. Consequently, the direct indicating magnetic compass is accurate for navigational purposes only when you are flying straight and level in relatively smooth air. The principal parts of the magnetic compass are 
two magnets, which are attached to the bottom side of a float, and are placed one on each side of a pivot, which is supported by a pivot jewel. The card is riveted to the top of the float. This entire assembly, float, card, magnets, and pivot, is encased in the compass bowl, which is filled with a non-corrosive liquid. This liquid affords some buoyancy, thus reducing the weight pressure of the mechanism on the pivot point. It also helps steady the compass card. Since this liquid expands and contracts with temperature changes, an expansion chamber is provided, which is also filled with the liquid. Inside this chamber is a flexible diaphragm that presses against the volume of fluid as it contracts and expands outward as the fluid expands thus keeping the compass bowl always completely filled. Also inside the compass bowl is a white painted metal strip that is between the compass card and the inside surface of the lens of the instrument. It bisects the lens vertically and defines precisely the reading of the card. It is called the lover's line. On the top of the instrument outside the compass bowl is an adjusting mechanism which operates compensating magnets to minimize deviation errors in the compass reading. In order to compensate compass error due to deviation, a compass rose is used. This is a large circle laid out on the ground and marked with the magnetic headings for every 15 or 30 degrees. Care must be taken that there are no magnetic influences in the vicinity of the circle. The plate is removed from the top of the compass and a non-magnetic screwdriver is used to set the compensating magnets to their null position. The plane is taxied onto the compass rows and aligned on a south heading. The engine is kept running and all electrical apparatus is turned on. The reading of the compass dial is then recorded. Then turn your plane to a west heading and again record the reading of the compass dial. Do the same with the plane headed north, recording the reading error on the compass dial. After computing coefficient C in accordance with the formula given in the manual, adjust your north-south compensating screw until the compass reading changes by an amount equal to the magnitude of coefficient C. Record the deviation on the east-west heading. Compute coefficient B and adjust the east-west compensating screw that amount. Now swing the plane on eight symmetrical headings and note any residual deviation. Finally, enter these deviations on the compass correction card. Remember, your direct indicating magnetic compass is accurate for navigational purposes only when you are in straight and level flight in relatively smooth air. To obtain a true course, the magnetic variation between magnetic north and true north must be taken into account. With an easterly variation, you must add the amount of variation to your compass reading. With a westerly variation, subtract it. In northern latitudes, when turning north, correction must be made for the lag of your compass reading. When turning south, correction must be made for the lead or overswing of your compass reading. And finally, corrections must be made according to the magnetic deviations of your compass as shown on your compass correction card.